In recent decades, millions of people have drifted away from Jesus and their Catholic faith. Sadly, many may never find their way back. I'm Tom Peterson, and I believe that God has called me to use my background in media to be a catalyst in the new evangelization. Our organization produces inspiring and creative evangelization messages that have helped lead hundreds of thousands of inactive Catholics, converts, agnostics, and atheists home to Jesus and His Holy Church. Join us as we travel across North America to bring you stories of heartbreak, redemption, and transformation as the Holy Spirit leads His people home. God has an extraordinary plan for each of our lives. He wants us to spend eternity in heaven with Him and bring as many people with us as possible. This is Catholics Come Home. Welcome to Catholics Come Home. Today we come to you from Allen, Texas, a community just north of Dallas. Soon we're gonna meet a young man who was raised in a nominal Catholic home, drifted away from faith, and became an agnostic. But see how the Holy Spirit changes his heart, brings him home to the Catholic Church, and gives him a unique gift of evangelization, spreading the faith in a way different than expected. Like everyone else in this series, our guest today came home to the church thanks in large part to a Catholics Come Home evangelization commercial and answering God's call. I'd like you to meet Oscar Cavazos. Oscar, thanks so much for being with us today and welcome home. Thank you, thanks for having me. Oscar, tell us about your faith background, what your faith was like growing up. I was raised in a Catholic family. Uh, we would go to Mass on Easter and Christmas and uh, weddings and quinceañeras. Uh, but other than that, uh, my parents worked a lot, uh, sacrificed a lot for us kids. So I didn't really grow up in the faith. I would see my parents praying the rosary for Christmas. Um, in Mexico, we would go to, to, to Mass. But being that Spanish wasn't my first language, I didn't really catch on to what was going on. So I called myself Catholic but uh, I didn't, I wasn't educated in the faith. Oscar, how would you describe your faith in your young adult days? I started focusing more on myself. Um, I, I realized I was really worried about uh, my fitness and girls. Um, you know, the, the, the girls were really what my focus tended to be on. What do I need to do um, to impress them? I mean, I even, I even got into boxing. Uh, so I was a Golden Glove boxer in high school. My focus was purely on the opposite sex. Tell me how moral relativism crept into your mindset as a child. As I'm witnessing these other um, Christians going to church and, and uh, knowing what they would do on the weekend, uh, and I wasn't into the party scene, so I just figured as long, if there is a God, I'm not doing anything bad enough to send me to hell. You know, if, if he's a loving God, why would he send someone to hell who doesn't do anything wrong? You know. Uh, so my, my yardstick was always comparing myself to other people. When I was in high school, it's when the tragedy at Columbine happened in Colorado, and I noticed people were praying, and I would question myself, why are they praying? If, if there's a God, why would he allow this to happen? So I had a really hard time reconciling a loving God with the evil in the world, which led me closer to my agnosticism. Um, I, w I did get confirmed in the church, uh, but I pretty much did it because my parents wanted me to, and I wanted to make my parents happy. But it was funny that after my confirmation is actually when I decided, I'm not so sure if Jesus is even real, that he exists. If he does, why is all this bad stuff happening? I would have called myself an agnostic for about 17 years. You know, I would turn to God when I needed him. He was my genie in the bottle, as they say. So um, it wasn't until I got married and we had kids. Um, my wife grew up with a faith, always wanted me to go to church with her. I always had an excuse why not to go to church. So for nine years, she tried to get me to go to church and I had excuses. Um, but when we had a, our, our first child, uh, when he was nine weeks old, um, he fell unconscious in the cars we were driving. It was scary. Um, we rushed to the hospital, took him to the ER. They grabbed him out of my wife's hands. He was nine weeks old. And uh, when I start seeing the nurses crying, I know something's not right. And uh, that would be the first time I actually turned to God. And what I said to God was, God, please spare my son. 
saying that prayer, as short as it was, and without me even knowing who God was, um, did give me the strength to be strong for my wife, who couldn't bear to see the doctors working on my son. Looking back, I now see God was there for me, even though I'd never considered him to be a part of my life before. What gets to me now is how quickly I turned back away from him. I pretty much said, thank you, God. Appreciate it. And uh, back to what I was doing before. There's no change. When our twins were born, they were born early. And so they had to spend time in the NICU recovering. Uh, our daughter was born with a collapsed lung. So another time of, of fear. And um, also during that time, there were some struggles within the family, within our, within our close family. And it, it led to the point where I had cut off communication from my parents and my brothers. Um, and so I was feeling very much alone. Uh, financially, we were struggling as well because I had just lost my job. Um, my wife was working for her parents and they had to do cutbacks as well. And so with the possibility of losing our vehicles, uh, we did have, we lost two houses. Um, and I felt like an utter failure as a husband, as a man, and now with the kids in the hospital, we live 20 minutes away from the hospital. That's when I turned to God and fell on my knees on the side of my bed. No one knew. The family was all in the living room. And I told God, God, if you're real, I need you in my life. If your son is Jesus and if he's a savior, I need to be saved. And if his mother can help me, I need her to be my mother. <laughs> and the feeling I got from that prayer, from being on my knees on the side of my bed, was an overwhelming calm that I hadn't felt in months. And I couldn't explain it. I knew that God was real at that moment. I knew that Jesus was real at that moment. And that his mother was consoling me at that moment. I come out of that room and it's like my eyes were open. I saw things differently. Um, I knew that I needed to fix me cutting off my family. No matter what had been said, what had been done, the only person who can change that is me by the grace of God, with His grace, His power that allowed me to do what on my own I couldn't do. And realizing that changed everything. Coming up, we'll learn what helped Oscar come home to the Catholic Church. The Catholics Come Home commercial really got me into looking back at the faith. Um, and just with, with the pull of the Holy Spirit, uh, I wanted to go to the Midnight Mass. We call it the information superhighway. And like any other road we drive on, the internet is always leading us somewhere. Now, we all know the internet can take us to wonderful, life-giving places. And there's a lot of stuff online that leads us away from fullness of life. So how do we know which is which? Maybe it's as simple as asking ourselves, is the internet a place we go to become more whole and fully alive? Is it a source of grace and truth or something that ultimately tears us down. See, Jesus made it clear. He came so we could have life to the fullest. He wants our relationships to be whole and healthy and our lives to be full of grace. And ultimately, he wants our journey here on earth to lead to eternity with him in heaven. How could we ever allow anything to compromise the fullness of life that Christ offers us, both in this life and the next? Where is your time on the information superhighway leading you? Our family has spanned the centuries and the globe. With God's grace, we started hospitals to care for the sick. We established orphanages and helped the poor. We are the largest charitable organization on the planet, bringing comfort to those in need. We educate more children than any other institution. We developed the scientific method and founded the college system. We defend the dignity of human life and uphold marriage. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we compiled the Bible. We are transformed by sacred scripture and sacred tradition, which have guided us for 2,000 years. We are the Catholic Church, with over one billion in our family, sharing in the sacraments and fullness of the Christian faith. 
Jesus started our church when he said to Peter, the first pope, you are rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. So if you've been away from the Catholic Church, we invite you to take another look. Visit catholicscomehome.org today. We are Catholic. Welcome home. I went to church and just sat there and listened. I really didn't absorb anything. I think I just found myself believing that I didn't need God. I just had everything under control and church was actually a, a burden to me. I had this sin that I carried in my heart for a long time. And I told myself for many, many years that the Lord wouldn't forgive me for this. When, when Father in the confessional says, your sins are forgiven, there truly is a, a feeling of, of weight lifted off. I don't care if it's two or three little sins that you're carrying, there's a feeling of I can breathe deeply again. I feel pure inside and I'm, and I'm ready to come to Mass. You can have a beautiful car, a big fancy home. If you don't have Christ in your life, there's an emptiness that's there. When you come home to the, to the church, you're coming home to a Catholic family where people today just embrace you. If you've been away from the Catholic Church for whatever reason, we invite you to take another look. Visit catholicscomehome.org today. Oscar, God got your attention with the illness of your children, but what was the pivotal difference that helped bring you back to the church? It just so happened that during that time, the Catholics Come Home commercials start airing on TV. And so I see one, and there's a part in the commercial that says, uh, guided by the Holy Spirit, we compose the Bible. And I thought, really? I'd never heard that before. So I need to look into that. And so I, I do. I look into the church fathers and the councils. And, um, you know, with, and that same commercial starts out with a mariachi band. And so it, it, it immediately caught my attention because you don't see mariachis portrayed on national TV too much. And it just reminded me of my family in Mexico and their devotion to the rosary. And, and the church is right in the middle of town and life revolves around the church. Um, so it, it sparked my interest. And maybe I need to look into the Catholic Church again and see why is it so different? Did they really compose the Bible? Have they really been around since the time of Jesus? And why did I not think of this or know this before? The encouragement that I got from those commercials, it was a defining moment for me. And so as I'm researching, I'm going to catholicscomehome.org and I'm reading all the information. And I tell my wife, um, and this is in Advent, so it's around November. And so I tell my wife, I think I want to go to midnight mass. It's, you know, it's, I know it's a Catholic thing, but I think it'd be really cool. I remember it was cool as a kid. And St. Jude is right down the street. So she's like, okay, uh, I'll go with you. You know, maybe my parents can watch the kids. So that, they did. And so they're like, and even her parents asked, why are y'all going to a Catholic church? And well, Oscar wants to go. I don't know why. Um, so the Catholics Come Home commercial really got me into looking back at the faith. Um, and just with, with the pull of the Holy Spirit, uh, I wanted to go to the Midnight Mass. And since the Midnight Mass, I haven't missed a, a Sunday Mass yet. And it's, uh, it's good to be home. And uh, once I was there, I knew that this is where God is. This is where Jesus is. So the next step is telling my Protestant wife, who has never looked into the Catholic Church, uh, was raised you know, not knowing that even Catholics were Christians. And so it, it was a shock to her when I said, I think we should be Catholic. And her response was, so all this time I've been trying to get you to go to church, and now you want to be Catholic? I said, I know, but, but look at this and look at that. And, and, um, and then her, her parents were shocked as well. They're like, why does he want to be Catholic? You know, I thought he was reading the Bible. And when I told them, well, it was because of reading the Bible and, and what I read in the New Testament, I see that the church they're talking about fits with the Catholic church. And, and uh, so it wasn't a smooth transition, but I did everything to try to make it um, not interfere so much. Uh, we were going to a Baptist church together as a family because they had a you know, really nice daycare center. Uh, the music was really good, cool band and you know, smoke and, 
and the sermons were really engaging, but it still felt like something was missing there. And I found what was missing in the Catholic Church. And what I found that was missing were the sacraments, the Eucharist. It was, uh, while the, the energy was there and the excitement was there, it was what I found in the church. And I knew I couldn't receive the Eucharist. I'd studied enough that I'd been away from the church. I got married outside the church. Um, I hadn't been to confession since my confirmation. So I studied that before I went. And uh, I, I thank God that there was a little green instruction manual that now I know is called the Missalette um, to, to walk me through what's going on in the Mass. Um, but when the consecration of the Eucharist happened, it immediately took me back to the Last Supper where Jesus says, this is my body. And I couldn't say that's not what he meant. I, I knew that he meant that he was present in the Eucharist. And once I knew that, there's nothing that could take me away from Jesus in the Eucharist. Coming up, we'll see how Oscar turned his focus from himself to God and others. And you'd be surprised how many people accept the rosary who aren't Catholic, which leads to phenomenal conversations. Amazingly, just a few weeks ago, the lake and the trees behind me were covered with snow. But in a matter of a short period of time, we're starting to see the first signs of spring. The trees are beginning to bud out, the birds have returned, everything has changed in a short period of time. So too did Pope John Paul II talk to us about ushering in a new springtime of hope for the church. He talked how the new evangelization would literally be the pivotal difference to usher in this new springtime in our church. Chapter four of Catholics Come Home, God's Extraordinary Plan for Your Life talks about the domino effect of how when we evangelize someone else, they in turn can spread that on and help evangelize others. We saw in today's episode how when one life is changed, that person be can become a beacon for the world and help usher in a new springtime of hope in their community. So let's help love someone back to the church and in turn, they can help bring others home too. It is here where you'll find the best marriage counselor, greatest healer, wisest teacher, and closest friend. It's a place where you'll escape the chaos of the world and find the lasting peace that only comes from God. Jesus is personally waiting to embrace you now with his divine mercy and healing love. Jesus is calling you home to his sacred heart today. I need your mercy. I need a savior. So many of us carry such heavy burdens. Come on, babe. It'll be fun. It's just you and me. Deep within, we struggle because sin separates us from God. But thanks to the grace of confession, God compassionately listens, forgives, and sets us free. So if it's been a while since you've been to confession or mass, come home and experience a fresh start. Visit catholicscomehome.org. Oscar, tell us what's new and different in your life now. Two years ago, had you told me that I was going to be talking about Jesus with total strangers, I would have told you you were nuts. That I was going to be able to walk someone through the Bible and understand it, I would have said, you're nuts. I don't believe in that. And by the pull of the Holy Spirit, uh, I have found a call to spread the gospel, just as Jesus commanded. And we all can spread the gospel in our own way. Uh, and the way that I found that suited me was to, to speak to strangers, to, to get out, because I didn't have that growing up. I saw other people doing that, other missionaries, you know, asking, have you been saved? Have you been saved? But there was never any, th any strong, solid foundation in that. So I felt called to share the fullness of the gospel that's found in the Catholic Church. And the, the ministry I found was St. Paul Street Evangelization, where we go out and, and we offer people a rosary. As simple as that, we, we don't confront, we, we let people come to us. If they accept the rosary, then we start a conversation, are you Catholic? And you'd be surprised how many people accept the rosary who aren't Catholic, which leads to phenomenal conversations. Or sometimes 
some of the best conversations are the ones that say, oh, no, thank you. I don't believe in that. And then we ask, oh, sure, no problem. Have a blessed day. Or we can say, are you a Christian? And they would say, yeah, I'm a Christian. And so we go from there. Have you ever considered the Catholic Church? Do you know anything? Or uh, a favorite is, so do you know who Pope Francis is? And everyone knows who Pope Francis is. And so some comments would be like, uh, I'm not Catholic, but I love your Pope. Oh, yeah, he's, a, he's great, isn't he? And it's breaking down that barrier, putting a face with the Catholic Church, letting them know that, that Catholics love God, love Jesus Christ, and want to share how he's changed our lives with the world. So they, they may experience the same change, the same salvific grace that we get from being closer to Jesus. And some of the other fruit has been, uh, I had to evangelize my parents who have been Catholic from birth, yet they weren't going to mass because they thought, well, as long as I pray the rosary, it's okay. As long as I pray, it's okay. But now they know that they were missing the Eucharist. And so they haven't missed a Sunday in, in over a year now. They go to confession. It's been great to see the fruit growing in their lives as well. Oscar, how has the sacrament of reconciliation made a difference in your life? It was in my first confession where I did an examination of conscience. It was two pages long, and I knew for sure that my penis was going to be saying the rosary for five years. And I went into that confessional, prepared, reading my sins off, where I completely felt overwhelmed. And in that moment, I felt like someone had put a blanket around me and embraced me and, and held me tight. And I would say that was my first physical encounter with the risen Christ, was inside the confessional. And walking out of there with all that heavy burden off of my back was a new life. That is one of the greatest gifts that Jesus gave us, the sacrament of reconciliation, a way to shed off our, our old life and live anew in Christ. Oscar, how has coming back to the church changed you as a husband and a father? Coming back to the church has had a tremendous effect on my life, not only on my life personally, but on the life of my family. Uh, it's, I now know what it means to be a husband, what my role is, what my role in life, why God created me. My vocation as a husband is first and foremost, but as a husband, I'm also the responsibility to be a spiritual leader in the home. To, to know my faith, to support my wife in her faith journey. Um, she's still Protestant, but she's considered RCIA, where before she would never even considered Catholicism at all. Um, before we got married, uh, I, we were talking about kids. And I said, I would like to get our kids baptized in the Catholic Church. Even though I wasn't a practicing Catholic, I don't know what it was. For some reason, I felt, you know, that needed to be done. And she said, okay. But when we actually had the kids, and you know, I had forgotten all about that. But after I came to the church, I asked her, remember that promise that we had about baptizing the kids? How do you feel about that now? And being that she was raised Baptist, you know, she was uncomfortable with it. After going on my retreat, she saw the change in me. You know, I kept going to the Catholics Come Home uh, website for encouragement, uh, seeing those testimonies, um, seeing the, the, the commercial where the people go into a big warehouse and they watch their lives before them. And I saw my past life and then how my life has changed. And I see that the, um, uh, she saw that change in me and she wanted to know what happened. So she went on the same retreat, a Catholic retreat. You know, she's a Protestant, you know, Baptist from birth. And she, it opened her eyes to the Catholic Church. Coming back from the retreat, a retreat, it was her that, it was she that said that, um, hey, I'm ready to get the kids baptized now. And I was blown away. And so the kids were baptized that year and um, we, she was eager to sign them up for religious education, uh, to prepare for the sacraments. And it's, uh, the blessings have not stopped since then. Oscar, thanks so much for answering God's call, for being with us today and for sharing the gospel with the world. No, oh, thank you. To Catholics come home. The use of social media has become an important tool in evangelization today, helping all of us to meet people where they're at, on the internet. Today's viewer question is very important to the modern evangelist. 
how can I use social media to evangelize? My first tip is to make sure to always glorify God rather than yourself on your social media pages. Use your personal social media accounts to spread the good news through scripture verses, articles, quotes from saints, and other Catholic resources and information about the faith. Secondly, respond to faith-related questions and concerns posed by others. As appropriate, seize opportunities to share truth with gentleness and reverence. The internet is often a tool used to de-evangelize. Atheists are big on the web. We need to make our presence felt in spreading the truth about Jesus Christ and the Catholic Church he founded. Lastly, help spread the good work of others on the web. Follow your favorite Catholic apostolates, like Catholics Come Home, on sites like Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest, and promote our evangelicals and the apostolic work to your friends and followers online. Our Catholics Come Home Facebook page is filled with inspiring and educational content that you can easily share on your own page, which will help you evangelize your own friends and family in subtle and sometimes not so subtle ways. In recent times, popes have been encouraging Catholics to take seriously the importance of using modern means of social communication to reach the masses in our culture today. We need to reach out to people with the good news everywhere we can, and that includes the internet, where so many people gather to discuss critical issues. Jesus should take center stage in our lives, offline and online. Here's your chance to get active in the new evangelization. Visit the CatholicsComeHome.org website, enter through the door, and click on the Shop tab. Here, you can order a Catholics Come Home book, evangelization cards, a DVD of the Evangemercials, or a car magnet. If you or someone you know has come home to the church thanks in part to Catholics Come Home, let us know. Or if you have a comment, question, or want to support our mission, email us at info at catholicscomehome.org or write to us at Catholics Come Home, P.O. Box 1802, Roswell, Georgia, 30077. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. We thank God for his blessings on Oscar and those people he serves. Isn't it heartwarming to see how our former agnostic has become a spirit-filled Catholic evangelist? God never gave up on Oscar. And we've seen in this episode how God has an extraordinary plan for all of our lives. Thank you for joining us for Catholics Come Home. Please remember to keep Oscar, the Cavazos family, and all of us at Catholics Come Home in your prayers. And do your part in the new evangelization by helping to love somebody to heaven. <laughs>